Hello, hello, how are you? Let me just check everything and then it should be all done and ready. I hope you are going to join soon. So let me check the connection. Mam tutaj taką prośbę, mężu mój, już mm. przestać na razie. Potrzebuję, żebyś wziął link z mojego YouTube'a i opublikował w grupie na Facebooku. Tak. Ale już widzę, jest. Well, hello! I can see you joining. Perfect. Well, I will ask you for a uh, favor, because... Uh, dobra, zostaw. Um, if you can just give a shout on Facebook and on Instagram that we are starting, so your friends can see, that will help. If you can post in Finnevar and Friends Open Studio Group, if you can post in Finnevar Art Collective for my patrons, if you can post wherever you like, we will just start in about five minutes and whoever wants to join, they will have a chance. So, hello, Blanca, hello. I hope this is going to be fun. It's going to be um, a bit of crazy uh, science because we have to do some construction. We're going to do some painting. I hope you're going to enjoy it and you're going to be inspired to take part in the challenge. So let me just get organized. And yeah, I hope you can see. Hello, Karen. Hello, hello. Uh, just uh, request. Hello, Vernon. <laughs> uh, it's um, my small request. If you can post that on Facebook and on Instagram that we are starting, post the link. That would help a lot because um, social media is not really on our side most of the time. So that will be great if you can do that so everybody can see it. Uh, yes, I'm going to surprise you at uh, a bit. So uh, let's give our friends a moment to join. Thank you, Karen, for posting. Uh, it's going to help a lot if you can give a shout on Instagram as well, if you can give a shout on uh, Finnevar and Friends Open Studio Group, if you can uh, give a shout on Finnevar page as well, that's going to help. My husband and Anat, they are here and they are going to help a little bit during the um, uh, live stream if you're going to have any questions. Anat, my uh, design team member, she's going to be our mod today. And I hope um, we are going to entertain you for a little bit. Uh, the plan is today we are officially starting new challenge. It's me and my design team. We are... Um, <laughs> uh, we are um, going to uh, prepare inspiration for you gradually. So the plan is to do it similar way as we did uh, with Trash to Treasure Challenge. That means we are going to start with my live stream and I'm going to do live alteration for you. I'm going to talk about the challenge, of course. And um, at the same time, we are going to uh, gradually release some of the videos from my design team members. They have something prepared for you. So later that week, you can expect videos from my uh, beautiful design team members and they are going to give you more ideas what to do in magical toy shop. I think that sounds great. Hello, hello everybody. You can hear me without any problems, I hope. There are no problems with connection so far as I can see. Yay. And uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the challenge. We were thinking about starting something which is going to be mm, fun to do. And... Uh, 
show. Oops. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have another phone here so I can read the messages on both when I'm doing the uh, the video for you. So I just uh, saw something. And um, so the plan is we are going to either alter a toy or we are use toy elements to create project inspired by uh, magical toys, some crazy toys. And before I'm going to start, I would like to um, show you some of the toys I altered before. I have some here and hopefully they're going to give you some ideas and inspiration. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do project step by step with you today. And of course, all the techniques um, you can apply to any other project as well. So I can see people joining. So give us thumbs up. So if you uh, if you can, because that's going to make it more visible on YouTube as well. So please like the video. And um, I'm so glad to see my patrons joining. I can see a lot, a lot of YouTube friends joining. So this is going to be fun, uh, fun uh, life, of course. So Magical Toy Shop is going to be open for at least three weeks so you will have time until um and yeah until end of september so you will have the time to find a toy or um, ask somebody kindly to give you a toy and join the fun there will be no rules about uh what you want to do with it you there are no special techniques you have to include it should be just mixed media alteration of course, based a little bit on my product. So please try to include at least one product uh, from my range. And of course, it should be inspired by the toy. So what can you do? Um, well, I mostly alter toys which are um, horses, like wooden horses or other animals. I like to play with the animals a lot and uh, change them into magical things. And I like to include parts of the toys into collage projects. If you're going to have a look here on the wall, you are going to see very creepy, but one of my favorite assemblage projects I made. And you can see parts of the toy, the face of the toy, uh, included in that and they are uh, those hands as well and that is something that I can probably bring closer to you so you will have a look and of course it took me some time to do it but it's kind of spooky it's kind of the crazy mood in it and of course that would go into magical toy shop uh, team so if you think this is inspiring for you you can go for the assemblage project like that and uh, of course this is a little bit on the crazy side you don't have to go into dark you can go into uh, clean and nice and shabby all the techniques are for you let me show you other ideas well if you don't have toys, you can always go shopping uh, to the charity shop. You know, charity shop, op shop, uh, flea market. There are places where you can get um, really uh, not expensive toys given away by people. And they may be very inspiring things. And in fact, the um, alteration I'm doing today, it is going to be taken from the uh, charity shop. So... Yeah, draw dollar, sorry, dollar stores uh, or one euro stores in, in Europe, they are also great options. So I have a huge collection of horses, so I only have some of them with me today. And um, I'm going to show you the one I made for my patrons already. This is um, Midnight Sparkle. So... Um, wooden horse that was completely yellow and hand painted and we turn it into magical horse with the extra tail and then I'm going to do something in similar mood today of course I'm going to make a horse but the colors will be very different 
and this one is uh, inspired uh, by midnight colors so you there's a lot of sparkly glitter if you can see you can uh, see the wheels on the bottom are moving so that is something that um, you can still use for playing if you want to but of course all that is possible to touch well, this is a good thing about alterations they are still usable as a home decor so you can uh, in fact interact with them if you want to you don't really have to be so careful with them so that's why i like to turn objects uh, like this into something else uh, similar mood from years ago this red uh, horse with the dragonfly uh, wings it is another alteration i did i just have thing for horses i just love wooden horses and i keep using them and i keep um collecting them as well i have beautiful hand painted horses from poland and um i have uh, dala horses from sweden as well original dala horses also including vintage dala horses and talking about dala horses i have two dala horses from ikea and of course I bought two because you need more than one. And then I altered them in different moods. So one is white and shabby with crackles. Another one is more sparkly and more dark. So here, oh, hopefully you can see all this crazy glitter on the bottom of the horse. That is just great. And it's always adding a bit of magic to it and then some texture and lovely blue tones <laughs> you know they are sometimes they are seasonal i think these horses they were more around christmas time they were supposed to be just plain white or plain black home the course you can put on the shelf but there it's wood so it is perfect for alteration and then on this one i if you can see um, I was playing more with textures and then there's quite a lot of crackle as well. So there are really cool details and the colors are very shabby and very, very delicate. And this is good size project like this. You can put on your shelf and it's going to be nice uh, statement piece. This is probably... 30 centimeters tall so almost 12 inches maybe maybe 10 inches uh, so that is um, another style of altering and of course this was very simple item but techniques like that can be used on anything this is just another way of mixed media altering and you can have great fun so i'm just trying to show you different things so you get more inspiration for the future now let me show you something else because horses we have covered already <laughs> but i have more animals <laughs> for example i made that years ago this is wooden owl and i painted that in the glittery way <laughs> and it is also handmade it's carved uh, by one of the polish uh, folk artists and it was completely plain wood, just like that, this finish. And of course, it was turned into magical owl. And then even made a carved book. And this, uh, and this little owl was um, living inside of the uh, empty book. So it had a special little house for itself. So I think that also works pretty well. I added uh, crystals on the belly yeah choo-choo trains would be perfect like i would love to alter choo-choo train i have to get some i really i have only two two cars at home but they are vintage uh, beautiful vintage cars and i had no heart to repaint them because they're beautiful as they are and i would just have to get something cheaper to paint them without any um without any pain in my heart 
So these are going away. Um, more toys. And some people uh, love altering houses and this is chipboard house. So this is not really toy house, but it could be little toy house and it's altered and turned into magical winter church. I think this is a church. If you're going to see here, it's a light bulb and then there's a lot of rust. And um, in fact, there, I can put the lights on inside, but it will be hard now. You have to believe me, I'm not even sure if the, if the battery is right. But that is another idea. If you have a toy house, maybe you would like to alter that and change into magical house, right? Magical toy shop is all about things. And fairy house would be a wonderful idea. So we are getting there and I hope you are getting some inspiration on what you can do. If you look at the techniques, hopefully you can see I used snowflake paste and of course I used a bit of rust paste and texture paste to create the wall effect that would be more vintage. So the house look old and also um, a little bit damaged. So you can see here on the other side, there was a space to put the lights in. So Dutch is altered house and you can even see a bit of moss uh, pretending to be trees or bushes. Another idea, again, shabby and really fun to make. I didn't like gluing it together though. Gluing together the elements was a pain. And honestly, mm, I think it could be done better. I, um, it was, uh, I think from Melissa Francis um, and it was done years ago. So after that, a lot of cheapboard companies, they made, um, 3D objects to assemble and they are better because uh, better to use because they are easier to assemble, easier to glue together. So I'm sure you can find something like that, but to make it better, you should really find an old uh, plastic, you know, or wooden house that would be a toy and you can turn it into magical fairy house. Yeah, so that is another idea. Next one. Um, next one is quite creepy, <laughs> and but I like creepy stuff. Altered dolls. Uh, some people are afraid of dolls, and I absolutely understand why. Uh, but from time to time, it's nice to alter a doll. And this was one of the projects I made when we were releasing the sculpture medium. So I made the dress for the doll. And I made her uh, decoration with a lot of uh, stuff that is there. And she's got pretty spooky makeup as well. And well, some people are afraid of the dolls. I don't know why exactly, but uh, I didn't probably see enough of the horror movies where the dolls were the killers. So maybe that is it. So she's more like a fairy, fairy queen. Uh, but I understand where you are. One of my friends, is, she's absolutely terrified of dolls. So she can't even look at uh, that direction. And <laughs> I get it. It is not easy for some people to play with that. But you can use doll elements. Yeah, I think it's the eyes. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I'm not afraid of them. Not, not at all. I just, you know, I like playing with them. Now, let's talk about creepy. This is kind of creepy. <laughs> I made it during one of the classes uh, when we were teaching the uh, doll class in California and I had a moment of break and I used um, elements which are leftovers uh, from that class. And this is more creepy version of the doll, but you know, Halloween is coming. Halloween is coming and this is perfect decoration for the Halloween and uh, that is something that um, you could put on the display during that time, for example. So, you know, it is all 
about what you like and what you want to do. You can go from shabby, through mystical, through dark, through vintage, steampunk, any kind of stuff you like. Hello, hello. So yeah, you you know, Chucky's friend. <laughs> <laughs> but you know things make me happy i just like to play with different things i like to change them so i absolutely understand dolls may be not your thing but just think about the possibilities it was very cheap plastic doll nobody can see that now so why not and finally finally um A deer uh, and this is paper mache deer that is inspiration that uh, for my project today my mechanical uh, what they did with the hair I just painted that with a lot of gesso and then painted with acrylic paints so this um, I'm really inspired by the idea and with the color palette and I I did this project five years ago probably and I want to show you how you can get similar results so I'm going to use the same products I used five years ago so you can learn the technique and use it for your advantage later of course this was this this is uh, not really a toy this is paper mache um, so like cardboard blank and it was not too beautiful and um, I decided to turn it into a piece of art and then it has also a tin house, like it, I used a mm, cookie tin and uh, I made a house for it. So it is inside of this, like in the shadow box because it is only one side. Like this side is not altered because I had no eye. <laughs> I only had one eye of this uh, doll, uh, which I used, and I decided to make it more like um, home decor instead of the toy. And that's why you can only see this side of the project all the time, because I couldn't find eyes matching. I only had this one in my stash. This is little secret. Nobody knows that you are the first ones who learned. And of course, it's all okay. So we are going to be inspired by this project. We are going to uh, use similar techniques. We are going to uh, get similar effects. So there will be light bulb. There will be a bit of mechanical feeling to it. I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, Rudolph. It's, it's steampunk Rudolph, in fact. <laughs> and um, we are going to work on the horse instead. And I have to show you my finding from charity shop we're going to alter this and of course i painted that already so this is gessoed with the black gesso and i prepared a little bit of the holes in it because i wanted to add elements to it so this is rocking horse it's in fact miniature of the rocking horse so the toy that uh, children would be use, uh, using to ride on but i really loved it and i loved the uh, the size of it and of course I had to cover the tail because when I was painting black it was not possible but we are going to apply this look and these techniques on the horse and you are going to see how to do it it's really fun and it's really great project to do it's really enjoyable so I hope you're going to try similar results uh, and of course I will give you the idea about alternatives as well so hello to everybody hello to all of you uh, i can see you joining it's great uh, so i suggest uh, you should now give me the thumbs up so more people will see the video and we are going to start in a moment to play on that horse alteration and of course if you can share it on facebook give a shout to your friends and um, to let them know that we are starting Magical Toy Shop Stream and Challenge, you are going to uh, give me huge, huge, uh, well, give me a favor. Yes, you are going to give me a huge favor. So 
We're going to start in a moment. I just gessoed the horse because I wanted to save some time. Uh, original color was natural wooden uh, like this. This is handmade, again, folk art from Poland. Uh, so you can imagine this is just plain wood painted with black gesso. And of course, uh, the tail <laughs> is protected, so I'm not going to uh, paint it by accident because I'm not very careful. And it is hard to, mm, it's hard to be um, very selective when painting. So we've got, oh, 55 likes. That is lovely. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so this is the inspiration. And because I did that five years ago, I was thinking, maybe five. Yeah, probably. Or even older. I was thinking it's going to be a good reminder that... Um, you can take things from your stash and create it, create pretty cool effects. Even if you don't have the latest things on the market, you don't really have to have all the news to create cool art. This is done with um, quite basic products and I want to show you how you can do it and to turn your toys into something ex really exciting and inspiring. And remember that later that week, my design team members, uh, they are going to post videos for you. So Sunday, probably on Monday, there's going to be, thank you, thank you. Uh, there's going to be post with the schedule as well, but expect more videos on the Magical Toy Shop coming. And you're going to have great uh, inspiration, different projects and, um, you know, it's up to you. It's The challenge is open until end of September and I am going to sponsor some prizes for you. So let's say two or three goodie bags I'm going to give to the people who are going to join us. So, ready? I hope so. It, it is, yeah, it is really nice alteration of the very plain, very, very plain uh, decoupage, well, paper mache blank. And now, how to do it? First of all, yes, whatever you have, start with gesso. And I will tell you why about the gesso, because this is, mm, this is important. Let me flip the camera up for you. Oh, that should be okay now. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look. Um, I said we should start with gesso. Um, most of the toys you are going to play with, they're going to be plastic or wood or some other. Hello, hello. Or some other materials which are probably not so great to paint on right away. So giving a coat of gesso of any color is going to be a good start. However, for my techniques, when I would like to create some depth, uh, starting with black gesso is going to help me to create the feeling of the natural shadow. I'm going to use shiny products and I'm going to give the color by brushing on the top of that, but this natural dark color, so black gesso in that case, is going to give me a nice shadow start. So I'm not sure um, how confident you are with the black gesso, but for uh, altering techniques, it is one of the very, very uh, useful products and it's good to have either um, black gesso or uh, good quality acrylic which is going to be completely matte. However, acrylics are more expensive. Um, if you would like to replace black gesso, you can replace it with pitch black impasto paint as well. The result will be very similar. Of course, it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, it's a good replacement for us to play. Second, you have to make sure that you have some good adhesives. And for alteration, I use heavy body gel so that is going to be my main uh, product also sorry you may need to use your hot glue for a moment to hold some things in place because dimensional projects they have this 
a problem that um, sometimes you would like to flip on the other side and you would like to work right away without waiting and some of the elements they don't really want to stay so using hot glue for a moment may be good solution as well um i just painted everything and i dried it but you can see i already prepared some holes because i wanted to add extra details here so i asked my uh, husband to use the drill uh, to prepare spare elements um, spaces for the elements and one thing i did in advance I glued the wings already because I wanted to make sure my um, work is going to be more smooth. We don't have to wait so much. So as you can see, these are mechanicals on the top of the um, resin, uh, resin wings from my cogs and wings set. I made a pair, so my uh, wooden horse is going to be magical Pegasus. And it is going to uh, have a better um, grip. So the plan is to add the wings on the top, of course. So I, this is what I did up front. I didn't want to do too much. So what is the plan? First of all, I'm going to add some steampunk details on the body of the horse. I'm going to add some cogs. And here I prepared different supplies that may be useful. I have some cogs from uh, meat form castings. Of course, I have the whole container of <laughs> my mechanicals of different sizes as well. I've got light bulbs. I've got winding key for my horse. I've got some mold made elements I wanted to use for the decoration and uh, paint it later, of course. Some extra plates. I have the same one and they're going to go on both sides of the horse. And then, as always, there will be some pebbles, some bolts. And to make it easier, I also have some board cogs because it will be quite easy to bend them for example on the neck of the horse instead of gluing big uh, metal element <laughs> um, to make it uh, work better <laughs> I have the coolest two chest of stuff well I gave you um, you know I could run through my studio before so you know how much stuff I really have. I picked these mechanicals and they are little uh, hard, uh, metal hardware accents. They will be good for the finishing touches. And if I can uh, suggest some elements, uh, I would say get medium and uh, not in smaller sizes of the mechanical or chipboard stuff because the horse or the toy is not going to be too big sometimes it's a good idea to create wheels from the big mechanicals but here we have completely different situation we have really pretty hooves and the whole rocking system <laughs> so i didn't want to cover that at all so i think we are ready <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> Terry, I have so much of the stuff I collected over the years. It is not hard to make selection uh, for me when I make some alterations. This was the my goal when I uh, was creating my stash, to be able to create a project without um, no last minute shopping. So I can really take things from my stash and start right away. I'm going to heat up the hot glue just in case if I need to attach the wings, for example. And I'm going to start with the bigger parts. And my idea was to add this detail here on the bottom as like a medallion, maybe together with one or two um, metal, <laughs> uh, metal bolts. Not too much because it's really quite interesting construction and I will use just the heavy body gel to start. So 
if you have any questions, I'm going to glue and try to read at the same time. I wanted to thank you for joining and I hope you are going to be inspired and you are going to visit uh, the videos of my design team members coming later this week as well, because this is uh, going to be great fun and moment to uh, just forget about um, everyday stress and just come back to the good childhood memories and play. Okay, so you can see what I did here. Yeah, that will be great Christmas gifts. In fact, yes, you are right. Um, I'm going to add a screw or two. I have these nice bolts I'm going to use. So this is going to look a little bit more mechanical. Of course, we are going to create steampunk look of the horse, but um, the best part of this kind of project is your imagination is the limit. You don't really have to follow anybody's taste. You just do it for yourself the way you like it. Oh, look, I'm adding the bolts here on the bottom. <laughs> It's hard to show you um, when I have it this way, so I'm just going to glue and show you again. I think handmade gifts for Christmas are the best gifts. People really like it because it is personal. And I remember years ago when we were um, just, well, I think it was maybe the first year we were married, we couldn't really buy gifts for everybody. We didn't even know what to do, you know. Uh, you know, now I have bigger family. Uh, we just decided to bake uh, poppy seed cookies and we gave um, a bag of cookies to every, every person. And they really appreciate that gift. They really like the cookies. They really like the idea. So I really have great memories. And next year they expected the cookies again. So I think we did a good job. Look, I'm taking my wet brush now. And I'm removing the excess of the gel. So in case if it's going to be too much, I can easily clean it up. But remember, this is going to be painted, so you don't really have to be so precise. Now, I want to decorate that part, the part of the, I don't know how you call it. It's, uh, well, I don't know what's the name of it. Let's say wooden part. And I have these resin elements I want to put in here together with the plate. That is the plan. So again, I have to be quite careful when gluing. Let's say like this. You can see when I take um, gel medium, I take quite a lot. So you don't have to be very careful here. It's better to put more and then clean it off. This is what I think. Ah! I'm going to make some space here because I want this label to be sitting on the top of that. I checked that before and I think that looks really cool in this position. So now we have a problem of the gap. And for the gaps, we have the best solution ever, a bit of cardboard. So I'm going to cut the cardboard and fill that gap with the little square. So it is going to be easier for my um, 
for my label to stick. Ta -da -da -da. These are hacks <laughs> that uh, every person is including in their projects. They just don't mention that because it is not important, right? The important is the final result of the work. You don't have to know how much of the gel or the cardboard is hidden under the elements. Yeah, that is going to be quite cool. And these two holes, I'm going to fill with some nice bolts. So it is almost as if it is screwed down. Yeah, that is perfect. Let me get more of these ones. One, two, I need four because they're on two sides. Uh, sorry for the shaking. It was a little, uh, tiny bit of a problem. So again, we are going to add this here. And here. And of course, I'm going to dry it and repeat on the other side because I want it to be uh, very similar on both sides of my horse. So now, before I'm going to move, I'm going to clean off the excess as much as I can. And of course, very likely, I will have to re glue something because I'm not careful, but it's okay. I'm trying to make sure everything stays in place. I'm a little bit worried this is not sticking well. So if you're worried, put more of the gel and this is going to secure it better. Of course, gel medium, uh, especially heavy body gel, it's, it's designed to be dried with the heat gun. So you don't have to be afraid of using the heat gun during the process. It's in fact speeding up, uh, sp speeding up the um, drying process safely. So I'm just going to secure it a little bit and then we can move to other parts of the horse. Paper mache witches, I can see idea coming already. Now I'm going to check the other side and clean it off before it's too late. See, this is the problem with the 3D objects. You have to check both sides before you are going to dry something completely. Not a big deal, but it will be nicer if it is not so glued. Okay, now drying and we continue. Yeah, that has some vintage feel to it and it is always nice to play with the things that um you know they're sitting on your shelf for some time and you have them but you don't even remember why you got them and then this idea comes to your mind and voila here it is
Here it is. I think I got this horse probably three years ago. I don't remember where exactly. Probably one of the flea markets. But thanks to that, I was able to get ready for the live stream without any problems. I could just go to my stash and pick the thing. So now the wing and I'm going to attach the wing with the hot glue first and then I'm going to secure it with the 3D gel or the heavy body gel. So it is going to be staying safely in place. Wing is always a challenge because it is very dimensional. So yeah, I have to glue it again, of course, because I was pushing too much. Let's do it this way. Accidents happen all the time when you make altered art. So I am not even surprised. And now I'm going to take big brush and pick up the gel and put it in there. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I think you can. I'm just securing that using extra amount of the heavy body gel. Sooner or later, the hot glue is going to chip off, but the heavy body gel or other gel mediums, they're going to hold um, the element in place. So that way you are in fact making like a double protection You're sticking that really, really well. So now again, cleaning off. It's a bit of construction work. In fact, you have to spend some time on putting things together. But once it is done, painting goes quickly. So this is quite fun solution. And um, I really enjoy doing it. Yeah, it's going to be a mechanical Pegasus. <laughs> I'm not sure how it is for you, but as a kid, I loved horses and I absolutely had great time um, painting them, drawing them. They were not too beautiful, but they were mine and I really wanted to be a vet or... A jockey, somebody who can work with animals or with horses. And of course that changed later, but when you were five year old, you really want to convince your parents that uh, you can have a horse in an apartment, on the balcony maybe. I was really trying, I really wanted to have a pony. And of course, for the magical shop, magical creatures, it is a natural choice. So I'm just drawing that a little bit again before I'm going to start decorating a little bit around. And then we're going to flip and repeat the composition on the other side. So what can we do to make that horse look a little bit more interesting? Of course, adding a wing is a great start. Um, we can look into um, small details such as cogs. And that's why I have, I just secure it a little bit so it is not going to move too much. Um, we can add little bits and pieces and I have some smaller sizes of the cogs and I'm going to see if they fit. And in fact, we can find pretty nice detail that was going to fit on the tie of the horse, which would be nice, I think. Let me just find the one that is going to be possible to repeat on both sides. Yeah, this one. Perfect. And then we can try finding 
even better detail to go on the top. So it is going to get nice and dimensional. I'm looking for the smaller bits and pieces. So these ones, they are a little bit too massive. I'm trying to find the ones which are going to be medium or small size and include them in my composition as a extra detail. Uh, another great idea is to use pebbles or um, some crystals or beads. These are always good ones when it comes to finishing touches. Okay, so let's combine this. It's going to be quite pretty and then finish that with the bolt and then hopefully I can add... Um, oh, that would be so cool. I'm just going to show you the plan. Once you make the plan, it's good to have two of each so you can repeat similar plan on the other side. <laughs> yeah, my dogs, they're, um, you know, everywhere and absolutely relaxed animals. I can see some of you already planning the project. I'm glad to see that. I can read something about dragons. And absolutely, the dragons are a perfect solution for this kind of um, challenge. Again, picking up the excess and then finishing touches. And one more. You've got some dragons available in your children's storage so yeah I can see why you are going to go for the dragons oh, this is moving a little bit too much see because it's empty here I have to add extra sometimes it's just easier to press and take off. Would be nice to add maybe one more small detail on the neck, but this time I'm just going to get one of the keyboard um, cogs because it is going to be easier to bend it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got dragon available too. Hmm. I can see some dragon toy shop inspiration coming soon to finish that up and to make it look more natural let's add another bolt or another screw
and then that will be too much so now let me find some smaller details I wanted to include and stick them on that side of the horse Everything clear so far? Any questions about the products I'm using? You know, heavy body gel is my go-to product, so I keep using that almost everywhere. So I guess you are not surprised. But maybe there is something else I should explain. Let's have a closer look. Yeah, heavy body gel is perfect solution when you ha want to do some dimensional projects. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm missing something in there, but I don't know what yet. So yeah, everything is too big. I think it's just going to be small detail like that. Okay, now drying a little bit and then we continue to the top. I have to dry this one especially because it is not too stable and very good solution when you have imperfections and you feel a little bit unhappy about them because you wanted to have more, more unified look. Uh, when you have so much gel visible, you can add extra texture, including some kind of texture paste. And my idea was to include a tiny bit of the graphite paste, which is back on the market now. We, we can s buy it again. So if you want to get your hands on the graphite paste again, it is the good moment to let your local shop know that you want it. And now I can include a bit of the textures in some places to create more of the grungy feeling. This this brush is dead oh my god what happened here let's take the brush which is more cooperative yeah so you don't have to put a lot it's just to create a bit of the textured feeling it's up to you uh, a lot of people they love their grunginess they love to have these textures everywhere i am on the side it uh, it should be matching the project like not every project requires textures sometimes it's simply an overkill and you don't need that much to have uh, great results also remember paint and any other products that you put on your project they already add some textures if you want it or not so it may be a good idea to be a little bit more delicate when it comes to um, texture paste, especially if your project is not too big. So look, I'm just dabbing that in some parts. It's going to add a little bit of the feeling of the grunginess, also maybe a bit of rusty caked effect. but not everywhere. More like this. And of course, for the good measure, we can do the same thing on the other side. Uh, what I decided to do to make it faster for you, I'm going to make just one side of the horse and paint it. And then of course I will finish the other side uh, once we finish the stream because you will have to see the same thing two times 
which is kind of boring. And I think that is going to be faster and more entertaining and you don't really have to watch me do to you know the same thing two times and the result is going to be the same anyway so you know that sounds like a deal so now i'm just going to dry it and uh, i'm going to add the elements i wanted to have on the top Remember, I told you I have some extras. So one of the extras is the light bulb that is going to go on the top of the horse. And then I'm going to add some lovely details here. There is going to be winding key and there's going to be metal element taken from the alarm clock as well. So um, to put it in, <laughs> uh, my husband took the drill and he made a hose. So this one, is going to match here perfectly. I don't even have to glue it, but just in case if I want to, I would just add some heavy body gel. So that is going to be the result. And um, next one is the winding key. And I can give you a little bit of the uh, side story. This key is in fact, um, key that was opening my home's door uh, when we were in Poland. This is an uh, old key to my parents' apartment. But now it is going to be part of my project. It's going to be winding key for my horse. How perfect is that? So this is going to be um, another interesting detail. And of course, same story. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of the gel to secure it, but it all depends how tight it is. So um, I wanted to make sure it's going to be above the wing. That's why it's quite long. And I think that looks very nice because uh, now with this detail at the front, and then here, this horse is really turning into magical toy. And just to secure it, now look, instead of using any details, I can just add texture, more graphite paste for the extra grunginess. Yeah. Now we're going to work on the top. The top is going to be, oh, come on horse. Oh, move. Oops, I blocked it. Oh, now, <laughs> this way, no, that way. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. The biggest hole is for uh, the light bulb. And I have some of the light bulbs saved. So some of the Christmas light bulbs and some of the um, more traditional light bulbs. I think a bit of the auditioning. Like this one may be too big. So maybe I'm going to use the, the one which is from the Christmas tree. And again, um, a bit of the gel inside because there is a bit of extra space. Just be careful when you play with the light bulbs. You don't want to break them by accident, especially with your fingers. <laughs> so this is what we have so far. And of course, to add finishing touches, I'm going to do a bit of bolts on the head of the horse. So we don't have a mane, so I couldn't really find anything that would work nicely as a mane, but I decided the bolts are going to do the job pretty well.
Yeah, it looks like circus ho horse. Exactly, Oriana. I think this is good description. I think for for um, yeah, four is enough. I'm just going to clean off the excess of the gel the same way with the wet. Uh, brush picking that off I absolutely enjoy making this kind of products because I can use my imagination and I can use up all the crazy things I have somewhere some, somewhere at home right so I don't really have to worry that much about um being restricted with the kit I have to provide for the class. I don't have to limit myself. I can just go into my stash and dig, 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 find the elements I wanted to have. And then when I'm ready, just put it together and come with more crazy ideas. For example, I wanted to make decoration for the face of the horse and I found this I think this is that can be I'm not sure a uh, piece of jewelry I'll just try to make it a little bit more round so it fits on the face of the horse a bit better and now <laughs> heavy body gel lover yes uh me too. Carefully, carefully. Again, the same story. Picking up what is not needed. But I think... This is pretty cool. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the gel around the light bulb, so I can always take graphite paste and fix that. Yeah, I, I, I think it could be old earring or maybe a piece of necklace. I'm not sure. But I would guess that would be <laughs> a little bit of jewelry. Okay. Last look to decide if we want to add anything more. Of course, we remember this other option on the other side. We can play more, but maybe just a pebble or two. I really like the effect I had here, just to remind you these little dots on the bomb <laughs> so i will do i will do similar thing for my horse not too many maybe three on the back well it is fun <laughs> And I really, I hope you can see that I really have a great time doing it. So I really appreciate that you are here with me and I can share my joy and my happy creative moment with you. I have a big deer from Berlin. Well, it is a good idea maybe to use it. Well, you have one month, right? So... Um, enough time to get a toy get the idea to um, alter it 
you know, just think about the options and then let's say until the end of September. And I can't wait to see your projects. <laughs> and I can't wait to see my design team members' projects because, of course, nobody told me what they are doing. So it's going to be a surprise for me as well. I think it was not a big surprise that I'm going to make a horse because I love horses and I have um, quite good selection of these. And it was high time to make another one. <laughs> Well, I just ordered a jar of heavy body gel. Uh, once you get converted to heavy body gel, you are going to use it for almost everything. I'm sorry to say this is highly addictive stuff, but it, it really does the job. And uh, the problem is, uh, um, in the beginning, it seems to feel odd because it's... Um, it's a different texture to what usually art mediums are. It's more like jello. But once you are used to that, once you get the concept how to do it for gluing, it's perfect solution. I think we are ready to dry it and start painting. What do you think? in the meantime of course I kept um, same elements for the other side so I put them in a box safely so I can easily continue my work once we finish the stream and my horse will be exactly the same on both sides well maybe not exactly but very very similar so um, in the meantime I can tell you what I was doing when I was getting ready First of all, I decided which toy I want to alter. So I looked at the size and um, I was thinking about what can I do with this element? Oh, oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. La 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 V. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for the donation. Um, during the streams, this is what you can do for some of the uh, artists. If you like what you, they are doing, you can support them by giving them a tip. You can give them a sticker or the tip of your choice with the message, just as like Lala V did. And this way you are supporting the channel, supporting the artist. And we absolutely appreciate your uh, love and we are so happy to see it. So huge thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. I am so grateful. And <laughs> so uh, I was, I got distracted. Um, so what was um, my thinking when I was looking at the horse? Which elements I can include? Uh, what sizes I can find? And I was trying to get the things which are going to match in the proportion. This is usually the biggest challenge when you are doing uh, some kind of altered art because we have elements which are not always the right sizes. And um, now it got easier once we started to use the molds. Molds are more popular and you can make a lot of uh, elements with the molds already. But um, the reality is Sometimes we want to use real objects, like the key, for example. I'm using the real key and I'm using um, a real light bulb. Uh, we have to have nice selection. It's good to have a couple of them at, at hand instead of just one size only. So I have a big jar of the collected light bulbs and they're mostly Christmas tree, old style Christmas tree or uh, car lights. From, um, from the cars, they are good sizes as well. And this way you can get nice selection of the elements, of course. 
And another thing is looking at the tree boards. It's good to have some tree board elements on hand because they're easy to bend and they are going to fit nicely into different spaces. It's easy to cut, easy to bend. You can see here for the neck, it was so, so convenient. Also, um, a lot of tiny bits and pieces such as screw heads, pebbles, um, little buttons they're going to be your lifesaver when you want to add the finishing touches so that is going to be something wonderful to fill up the gaps and um, also if you have too much of the um, empty spaces they're just going to do quite good job okay so i think we are ready and we can start painting with the black gesso let me find the jar of gesso and put the brushes back in the water. Important note, don't leave them outside because if you do, uh, they may get just completely dry and later you have hard time uh, bringing them back to life. So I am a huge fan of collecting things, as you know already, and I always say, if you can, ask your friends, ask your neighbors, ask your colleagues at work, maybe they have some stuff they want to get rid of, and that is going to give you stash to create projects of that kind, it's going to be easy to recycle, and I really had great experience every time when I asked for some kind of donations. I was given stuff, so I was given the light bulbs uh, from our car um, dealer. I was given computer parts by my friends. I was given uh, old broken jewelry and I was given buttons. So people are happy to contribute uh, to your art this way. And um, you can easily get uh, access to quite interesting, maybe surprising um, materials. So you never know. I'm adding a little bit of water to the gesso because it was quite thick. So I'm using my heavy black gesso from Art Basics. And of course I use the same one to paint the horse. So now I'm just going to touch up the details I added later. It's going to prepare the metal elements for painting and of course also the light bulb because this way it's going to be so much easier to work on it. I'm just touching up everything because it's <laughs> annoying for me. And of course remember about the wing. The wing has to be painted on both sides. It's a little bit longer work when you do 3D stuff because you have to look from all, all angles, you have to check all directions. On the collage it's only front and the sides. But no worries, it's easy, it's quick and just so dries really quickly so it's convenient. So you can see turning into black horse so soon. Yeah, bottle caps are perfect. Ilona ha uh, has a great idea. I have a lot of bottle caps as well, mostly beer bottle caps. My friends were collecting them for me. And um, can openers as well. You never know what may be useful. I'm just trying to touch up all the things which are in the old color. But remember, we're going to use metallic finishes to paint, so it's not really a big problem if you're going to miss a tiny white spot. Probably nobody will be able to see it anyway. Yeah, the wing. The key. The 
it's still a little bit wet I can see but I'm trying to be careful and of course all the techniques we are doing here they're easy transferable to collage to home decor to furniture it's just up to you what you want to do with these ideas Not bad at all, <laughs> I think. Just trying to get into the gap. Okay, now the bottom. And we are almost done. We can start applying paints. <laughs> yes, that's good news. This is black horse, not a black cat. However, we were discussing Halloween before. Black cat would also do. I had a black cat for some time, but Unfortunately, one day Black Cat didn't come back home and we don't have Black Cat anymore. Then we got Mishkin and Yaga and they don't go out so much. I prefer to have them home safe because they are my beloved pets and I don't want to lose them at all. I'm sure you know how it is. Yes, um, you were talking about the trash. Exactly, give us the trash and we are going to be happy. This is how it works. And I remember in the beginning people were like, really, you want that? You sure? I have to re-glue that because it moved, sorry. And yeah, I, I love that. And I was so excited and they were like, wow, you are a bit weird, but later on when they could see what i'm doing with that they they got it like oh, okay yeah that makes a lot of sense that's cool but the first reaction was like hmm are you some kind of hoarding lady or something but <laughs> yes i'm a hoarder but i am um i've got good excuse because i'm a artist and i do a lot of stuff with recycling <laughs> I think this is ready for drying yeah craft piece hoarder <laughs> Okay, no, I just discovered one place I missed. Here. And that would be very annoying to see because I can see it from the top. Still moving. Good drying, and we go to metallic paints. Yeah, what you do with it?
so once I have you here, I can just remind you to visit our website, which is finavar.com. This is the place where you can see projects from my lovely design team members, very talented people. And they're going to prepare inspirations for you as well. So stay tuned later this week. More of the mixed media magical toy shop uh, project is coming. And of course, check us on social media, especially YouTube. So this is my channel. Then uh, Finavar Art Files channel, where you can see all the tutorials from my talented design team. And also make sure you're going to visit on Instagram. We have two accounts. One account is brand. So everybody from design team and me. And uh, also we repost a lot of projects of Finavar fans. And um, there is also a second account, which is called just Finavar. And this is me personally, if you like to know what is happening in my life, what I'm up to, uh, what I'm doing, uh, you can find me on Instagram. So Finavar Studio, it's the brand and Finavar, this is me. And of course, you can also follow us on Facebook. Make sure that uh, you're going to join our Finavar and Friends Open Studio group if you're not there yet. So you have plenty of options to get inspiration weekly because my design team members make projects for you twice a week. And there's always video tutorial going with that. They are absolutely amazing people. And the stuff they prepare for you is the best quality. This is really the top of the top of the inspiration in the craft industry so um, it's basically getting classes for free and um, you can always check on instagram when we post and you can go to the blog and see details see the video on the youtube channel or on the blog as well so i'm absolutely proud to work with them i think they are so talented they're so lovely group so I'm a um, really lucky person to have such a wonderful team on my side. And uh, another way, if you'd like to get connected, if you'd like to get content similar to what I'm doing today, if you'd like to take part in more of the streams, which are also exclusive streams, you can join me on Patreon. This is a subscription website where you pay monthly fee and you get the access to... Um, content which is reserved just for my patrons for example for 10 euro you get two videos per month so it's like two classes per month and you're getting uh, discount codes for the shopping you're getting uh, wall, uh, wallpapers for your phone you are getting a lot a lot of cool stuff and this is all possible to get uh, for just 10 euro per month so this is like having coffee and cake and um, you know, for that, that amount of money, you also get the access to the private group. So if you want to join me on Patreon, you can ask some of my other patrons how they enjoy it. They are here as well. And they can tell you the experience they have. And of course, you can cancel anytime and join anytime. And you can move uh, from one tier to another as well, because that is absolutely... Uh, easy to do and if you want to find the link it is in the description of this video as well so on patreon you have also access to the previous month's content so if you're going to join now you're going to get the access to classes and videos from the previous months which is awesome deal i think and uh, i hope you are going to take the benefit of that as well because i absolutely have best time ever creating for you and because now I'm not able to teach in-person classes this fills the gap in my heart so well that um, I'm sure I'm going to continue that in the future because it's one of a kind experience very private and very um, special like I made closer you know I'm I mean, really, I made closer contact with a lot of you this way as well. <sighs> yeah.
yes, so that is ready for painting. And I'm going to move the stuff around a little bit because I need to take the colors out. And I told you I made this product years ago where I didn't have paint um, or I didn't have art mediums myself as a brand. So I have to use whatever I had. And at that time, I think Prima already released the selection of my uh, mica powders. And in fact, if you look at the project I was showing you before, so the deer, this is painted with mica powders and I'm going to show you how I did it. <laughs> I hope you're going to have a great time uh, using them because they are so versatile. And in fact, mica powders, they last for a very long time. <sighs> <laughs> 1,000 tier? I'm not sure but I if I'm able to do so much. I think there's a limit. Um, yeah, so yeah, you can pick the tier and you can um, you can join us anytime and we are very happy to see you in our group on Facebook as well. So I have iridescent mica powders here but I also have silver color, which is going to be kind of like a natural silver tone. And um, we are going to use also some shadowing. So first touch is going to be more of the dry brushing of the color. How to use the powders? Of course, you can mix them in water with water and spray, but what I would suggest to do is to use them like paints on the palette, okay? They are super, super shiny. However, they don't look like that in the jar because iridescent mica is almost white when you think about it. It has tons of color when once it is applied on the project. So what you can use to make it into paint? You can use fluid medium. This is um, one of the products that is dedicated to uh, liquid acrylics, but you can use it with any acrylic paint. And it's in fact acrylic binder and it is for uh, painting or is it for making the paints more liquid? Also, other option, if you don't have that, you can look at, for example, soft gloss gel. And that is something that is traditional gel medium. And of course, you can uh, use it for gluing, but it is going to be quite good body to mix it with the uh, micas as well. And of course, the brush is important. Brush should be flat and uh, not too hard, so you can easily dry brush on the top. If you look at the technique of the painting here, you can see different parts of the uh, project have different tones, which means I was using different colors of mica, but also I had to work on the details a little bit more. I had to do a bit of uh, shading as well, you don't have to worry about that. You can do it after painting with the mica. Um, or this was the original technique I made. <laughs> and I'm going to start with mixing some of the silver uh, color, which is going to be like the basic one. So I'm going to use pale silver mica powder. Uh, but uh, later I'm going to include other colors as well. And um, of course, if you don't have mica powders, you can use iridescent paints. For example, there's paint which is called Opal Magic, which is based on two tones of paint and there's iridescent mica included in that as well. So that is going to be very good selection. Or you can try to place, uh, play with iridescent waxes, so Opal Magic wax. However, after waxes, it's hard to paint so once you start with waxes, you have to continue your work with waxes. Now, dry brushing means you have to have dry brush. So I'm going to remove the excess of the paint on the paper towel. And I'm going to start just by brushing one color more or less everywhere to see all the details, what is going to happen and so on. So my horse from black is turning into silver. And it's okay. We're going to work on the colors and details later, but look, a little bit of mica 
goes a very long way. Also check the way I'm painting. I'm not going deep in the details. I'm only touching the tops. This is the technique which is already giving you a lot of shadow uh, on your project. And that is the advantage of the black gesso now because we have natural dimension showing up so quickly and you can easily continue with colors you like. But every time when you do it, try to be just on the tops. So when I'm painting, I'm never going into the detail, uh, not too deep. Every time I'm brushing with the flat brush. So it's almost, if I will show you on my finger, I always try to do so, it's almost like going like this, using the edge, not the top of the uh, brush. And this is the technique I've seen first time who years ago when I could see one of my friends was painting um, game figurines, you know, um, there are some gaming systems that have beautiful figurines, uh, for example, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And those people, they spend a lot of time preparing their armies for the battle. They paint the figurines uh, with the special modeling paints. And of course, one of the ways uh, is to create the result, like there is dimension. And what they do, if they first use dark or black color as um, start, and later they are going to continue with um, other colors on the top. Oh, this one is not dry. I have to remember about that. So I, I saw that and I I was not crafty at that time. And I was just so surprised how effective the black background is, because it really is. And later on, when I started doing my own projects, by accident, I just found the same technique for painting dimensional projects and it worked so well. So some of you probably could see this kind of painting before, but this is, this is the source of it. This is how I um, discover it, I think. I'm just going to do very cheeky thing and I'm going to attach that bottom part with the hot glue for a moment. I'm just painting one side, remember, but I'm going to repeat the, the whole process on the other side. I'm running out of the silver, so I'm going to add more. Now I have more of the paint. I just added the liquid and I can dip my brush. I wanted to brush more here. Uh, this is kind of tricky with this dimensional uh, part. I couldn't remove the top. I have to hold it all in my hand. This is not too easy. That's why I have to go with my brush quite carefully. I'm going to focus mostly on the, <laughs> on the horse and the embellishments, of course, but <laughs> uh, you do the same technique on the, um, the stand <laughs> of the horse as well. Come on, stop blocking your thing. You could see with a tiny bit of the mica powder and one brush, I'm able to get amazing result and so much of the shine. The trick is not to be too perfect. Can you see the dimension already? It is just giving you so much of the possibilities. 
right? And with a tiny bit on your brush, you can go many, many uh, ways. And also, um, it dries quickly. So I can now switch to another color and try to work on interesting color palette. So because this is a rocking horse, <laughs> I was thinking we can add a tone of green, pretending this is like grass, a little bit of the green on the bottom, of course. So it is going to be nice. And then we can include some magical colors as well. I've got gold mica powder. I've got green. I've got peach. I've got um, blue and lilac. So these are the original colors of the um, Opal Magic um, mica powders. I'm going to close silver because it's everywhere now. For example, inside of my container with embellishments. And I will have to do a lot of cleaning, but it's okay. It's okay. Oh, you sign up for Patreon. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you. That's lovely, Denise. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you will get more of the tutorials. Uh, and you have a lot of watching now because there's going to be uh, four months of the content waiting for you. So I hope you're going to enjoy. <laughs> I really appreciate it because... Uh, thanks to Patreons, what really happens, thanks to Patreons, I'm able to stay home and create for everybody. So I can do live streams uh, open for everybody and I don't have to worry that my classes are not happening. They're not cancelled. Uh, so they're cancelled and I don't have to worry uh, in the situations like that. So in fact, supporting me on Patreon, you support also other artists and you give me the creative freedom i'm oh thank you thank you so much uh loren i'm taking the green color now and we repeat the same uh, idea we take some of the powder and then we add the base for example liquid medium or soft gel i will just change the brush maybe so it's going to be cleaner and we will try to brush on the bottom. As you can see, it's very simple. Uh, the whole magic with the Opal Magic is they are really visible on the darker surfaces, not uh, on the light ones. On the white light ones, they give you like mother of pearl effect. And on the darker ones, you can see the color. So even here on the palette, you can see the difference when I'm just on the dark paint. You are able to see the results. And now I'm just brushing that tiny touches of green. It's going to be iridescent green with that silver. Look how nice it is. Delicate, but um, reflecting the light. It's a tiny, tiny touch of magic. <laughs> so I can do the whole bottom part in green. And of course, the more mica you are going to put, the more uh, shiny effect you're going to get. So in a way, mm, all the layers of paint we are doing there uh, cumulating the mica effect. They are uh, making this uh, results more dramatic and more interesting. You can see the delicate tone changing result. I will do that also to the bottom part here of the stand, the wooden stand. So we have that here and then uh, let's think about other colors as well. Uh, do I sell them? Not really. <laughs> I usually keep them at home or I um, give them away as gifts. <laughs> 
if in fact if you are my patron from time to time you are able to get uh, one of my projects as well in a giveaway unless you are my 100 euro patron then you're going to have a chance to get my project almost like every couple of months because i'm going to make giveaways for them almost every month it's always a special gift so it's not hard to get my project but this is um the highest possible level of support and <laughs> This is what I do with my project. So it is quite possible that um, some of the projects I do, do during the live streams, they're going to be later offered to um, my patrons or I'm going to give them as a gift to somebody. Like, for example, um, I think one of the projects I made during the Trash to Treasure uh, challenge uh, it was sent to United States to one of the lovely ladies who wanted to have it so much and I think one more got uh, into hands of Vasily <laughs> as a gift for birthday he is my friend and he is my patron as well so this way I'm able to find new homes for my projects I never really considered selling them because it's so hard to put price on the on them I really feel attached to most of them it's easier for me to give them away as a gift now I'm adding a touch of peach <laughs> there you know there are always giveaways uh, happening in the patreon group and all depends on the tier you are on and of course the higher tier, the more likely you're going to get a prize because this is how it works. And, you know, fingers crossed, every time I try to make it as um, fair for everybody as possible. So just look how magically Micah is transforming the project. Still, you have the darker shadow effects in the bottom parts. I'm just going to add a bit of gold to it and then finish that up with the silver and I will show you how you can work on the shadows. Was that complicated? I think it's super easy technique and everybody can do that. So I'm the, using the um, iridescent gold now. <gasps> you have no sound? Oh no! How are you doing? Have you got the sound, guys? Let me know, because if it's me, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, the peach is really nice. It's not so cold. It's warmer tone of the um, pinkish. And now I'm adding the iridescent gold. I think, check your, um, maybe you switched something by accident on your YouTube. Look, this is ear, oh, perfect. Yeah, now we have, look at the palette. Iridescent peach, green and gold. And now we are going to do the touches of that gold. Remember to use the paper towel to remove the excess. And then we can play uh, with adding touches. I intentionally stopped here. I didn't add too much on the wings. So now I'm adding the wings. And I'm probably going to tone it down uh, with silver again because this is not a problem. I'm just trying to find the right color tone so it's going to be interesting. Just look at that. I 
and you can layer colors so they're going to go tone to tone. It's now we almost get like a mother of pearl effect. And I keep using the same kind of brush, the same kind of solution. And in fact, look, I'm going to use that peachy color on the horse face here because horses have lovely pinkish mouth, <laughs> right? <laughs> of course they do. As I told you, the more layers you do, the more um, shiny it gets. So on some point, you will have to stop yourself and go back to more uh, delicate techniques. Just stop yourself before it's too late. Yeah, we have to ignore that part on the back because it is still not painted with the silver color. Now I'm going to give it a moment of drying. Hello, Tiffany, good to see you. And I'm going to do finishing touches uh, to see if everything is fine and add the shadows. This paint dries quickly, so you don't have to wait a long time. Look, I'm able to touch it already. So now, first I'm going to add a bit of the golden tone here on the green. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, not so one color only. Also, maybe here on the on the wings, on the mechanical parts. I would say not bad at all. <laughs> what I really love is how these work together because they're a little bit transparent. So you can see the bottom colors through the top as well. Yeah, and now let's clean the brush. <laughs> That's a challenge. Come back to the silver and pink, do the touches of silver and pink and a tiny bit of shadows. I ran out of the silver, of course. Where's the silver? <gasps> ah, here. So, this is the one that got a little bit knotty. I need to check if there's any part that I would like to make a bit colder. Because now silver is doing the, the job. Yeah, it is almost like fish scale effect. Oh, I'm going to tone down the wing a little bit and the uh, key. Not too much, to be honest. And then last touches with the pink. <clears throat> I 
My cat is making funny noises. She's sleeping, but... <laughs> I totally forgot about this cog, so I have to... Okay, so we still have the shadow inside of the ears. Thank you, thank you so much! Well, this is magical project, so I could go really ballistic with the magical colors. And it's of course up to you what kind of color palette you are going to go. I wanted to show you the original technique, an original idea that I had for the um, deer. Of course, the deer is inspiration you can uh, use any kind of techniques you like in this challenge the only requirement is to include a toy in the project so it's not like you have to do the same thing i'm doing right this is just to give you the ideas yeah well i'm going to t to do the tail painted now in a moment so let me check First of all, some touches here on the cog. Front looks pretty neat. Don't look on that side yet. Right, we have that all done. I added uh, a bit of gold. I think we need to do a bit of more of the gold here, not too much. And here, not too much. And for the finishing touches, I'm going to work a little bit on making the shadows deeper. So hopefully, no, it's not a good idea. So hopefully you can see how the things go. And also I'm going to let the tail go finally naturally i know it was a lot of gluing but oh, i just found what i missed <laughs> yeah this is the part of the the pain with the projects which are dimensional okay i made a braid on the tail <laughs> to make this bun. Let me quickly paint the top of the... Um, construction here. I started with silver. The, the tail is very grey. <laughs> Ilona, uh, well, this is the magic of mixed media. You have to see some things to believe they're going to work. Um, remember, this is really metallic. So metallic is a bit different perception to just having pink or having green. Um, because it is shiny, the idea is like, you know, it's going to look more magical. It's going to be more uh, eye-catching. So, of course, now I can use the leftovers of the paint and add a bit of that sparkle on the tail as well. It's not going to change a lot, but in fact, the color of the tail was not bad at all. It is kind of like gray blonde. So the gray blonde tail is not going to be a bad solution for us. Uh, 
I think I should have some black spray somewhere I can spray it a little bit but look it's not bad at all let me let me find spray um, I had this gray gray spray somewhere That will work. Ta da! And who is the magical horse? Haha. <laughs> of course, I will try to brush it later. A little bit more of the paint. Ash blonde. <laughs> That's a very romantic name for the color. Ash blonde. I think in in Poland we call this blonde mouse blonde. Nice. So now, for the last step, we need smaller brush. Something that's going to help us work with the uh, delicate shadows. And some kind of uh, acrylic paint or even black gesso, uh, watered down, of course, if you don't have... Um, Mm, acrylics. I am going to use liquid acrylics because that is uh, easy. That's very easy solution. But you can water down just so as well. I'm just going to take clean palette because I'm afraid mica is going to be everywhere. Oh, I found something silver. <laughs> it's even better. And I'm going to start with just adding tiny bit of this black touches I took ink black acrylic paint um, I, you can do black wax but this wax is going to be more gray so I would say in this very shiny project it is going to be too flat and too gray For me, the acrylics, the liquid acrylics are going to be better solution because they are um, shiny. So even if they're going to be uh, on the top of this, it's still um, going to have this like shiny finish. So I'm using two brushes. With first brush, I'm applying the shadow. <laughs> Just trying to make this shadows naturally deeper and with the second one I'm just spreading that paint a little bit more just with the water right I'm just going around the embellishments to show you how you can easily do it and I'm sure you can get the point quickly. What is the technique here? If you want to uh, emphasize something, for example, you want to make sure these pebbles are going to be more dimensional. You can go around them with a small brush, soften it up a little bit. See what is happening? It's almost like watercolor painting. However, um, in some parts, you can be a little bit more conscious. Like there are some lines that you would like to make more 
visible. For example, we are making the horse's cheek. Oh, and it is too far. So look how easy it is to tone it back with the wood brush. Yay, well, yes, Ilona, thank you. Don't forget to give me a thumb up. I hope you like the video. So that is going to help a lot. Look, we can go around here and even perfection is not going to be so important because you can easily on this slippery surface tone down the paint now the horse looks a bit creepy right so we have to clean it The same for the um, bolts. What you want to get, you want to have clean dimensional surfaces, like, you know, clean lines and then deep shadows. So that is something that you just have to feel and that's why I really recommend using two brushes. So one brush is going to help you with the small details, for example, inside of the ears, right? And then with this brush, you can clean off the things that were not supposed to be painted and water it down a bit. You can go inside of the nose and then clean off. Look at the head, looking more dimensional already. We have chest here, right? Look, we can make sure the muscles are more defined. <laughs> it's a little bit like uh, makeup for the muscles. I heard some people do the fake ABS by putting contouring on the muscles on the tummy. Can you believe that? Instagram world is uh, yeah, completely unpredictable. So let's do a little bit of the contouring. You can see what I have done here. The same contouring you can do here on the wing. You can show the details of the feathers a little bit better. It's, the more you do it, the more you get used to the possibilities of shade, you know, making shadows like that, shading like that. So it's really personal taste, how deep shadows you like, but the more dimensional projects you do, the more of the uh, shading you may need to apply sometimes because the details may get lost. And this is easy way of uh, bringing them back, to bring them back. So that is more. And then of course I can continue here around <laughs> the pebbles. And then the hoofs, of course. The hoofs also need a bit of shadowing. You can see because the paint is 
a bit transparent. It is so easy to get nice results and you still see mica through it. So it's not like killing the color. It's just applying the shadow just in the right places. And then, of course, here on the plate. Here I can even use the baby wipe, but the paint goes into the cavities, the deepest parts, and you can read the text better. I think there's some kind of glue here. Yeah, <laughs> there was. I will have to repaint that part with the mica powder, but this is not a big deal. But you get the shape of the plate. so much better now and this is how you play this is basically how you play uh, how you can create the best results if you like you can just use the water and semi-transparent paint to create the shadows on your project and to make them deeper and more dramatic and of course after drying this is going to be um, a little bit shiny so it doesn't really give you the impression something is flat here oh, almost ready also if you want to this is the moment when you can include some rusty colors if you would like to create for example a rusty effect together with your shadows now you could do a bit of the dirty rust and uh, this would be exactly the same way you could just water down the paint oh, uh, for example tiger orange or carmine or use the rust paste effect and with the tiny tiny brush you could add a bit of the rusty color here and there as well if you want to i'm not planning on that i didn't i don't want to have rust on everything which is maybe a surprise but just to show you how it works it will be exactly the same kind of um process right and then getting off the excess or getting off everything because this is not exactly what I wanted. Okay, so the rusty color <laughs> is going to be for next time. I don't really want to have this rusty. I want this to be shiny magical with deep shadows. So now we can just uh, compare the result. Of course, this is not exactly the same color palette. This is more bluish, silverish. This is more golden green, but um, the same technique of painting. You can now see how I made the shadows around the eye and the ear and how I did the shadows under the uh, wing here and around the mushrooms and flowers. So you know the technique. This is how you can create uh, very cool effects using mica powders. And um, let me check if you have any questions before I'm going to say my goodbyes and to encourage you to take part in our mixed media challenge for September. It's going to be magical toy shop altering the uh, altering the toys or including toys in your project. You like the horse more? I'm so glad. That means I made some progress in five years. 
<laughs> so uh, just to remind you, we ha you will have the time until end of September to uh, make the project. Of course, if you want us to see the project, use the hashtag mixed media, sorry, magical toy shop. Uh, if you go to my Instagram account, there are hashtags I'm using. And on Monday, we are going to uh, also post the uh, official um, flyer of the challenge. So you are going to see the um, effects of my work. I will take good photos tomorrow in the daylight. And I will just make sure you can see my face. Hi. <laughs> Hi again. Oops. Um, so... We are going to post the information on the Instagram, on Facebook pages. So you are going to see the um, hashtags you can use. And of course, when the end of the challenge is going to come, I'm going to make the drawing and we're going to pick uh, two, maybe three lucky winners. And they are going to get a um, goodie bag with the Finavar products, of course. So this is um, going to be finished later today. I will have to do the other side of the horse. You know how you can use mica powders, iridescent mica powders and metallic mica powders. Just to remind you, uh, this is very old product, but you still may have it on your shelves. If not, you can use Opal Magic acrylic paints to get similar results. Here, uh, they're just single color. So this is maybe easier to uh, control how the color is going and how the, um, how the application is done. But um, it is just fun. And um, what I wanted to uh, remind you, check us later this week because we are going to have more inspiration from my design team and they are going to do... Um, projects for, for you, there are videos, they already recorded some of them, so I know they will be coming and that's going to be great inspiration. So it's not just me, this is just the idea, you know, to give you uh, this uh, creative, um, well, to start your creative juices flowing, as people say, but you don't have to include my techniques, just some of the products if it's possible, and of course a toy. You can check on Facebook, you can check on Instagram. On Monday, there should be flyer ready. And uh, we should have uh, all the dates included. Everything will be uh, there. And I will try to also post a schedule so you're going to see when the projects from my team are coming. So I think the first one is coming on uh, 11th. So uh, later that uh, week. Please join me on Patreon as one of my patrons to learn more mixed media techniques and to get access to unique um, content such as videos about mixed media basics, about composition, about textures, about color, about uh, rules of art. And uh, also join me to see more of the tutorials and visit us on YouTube here and Finavar Art Files for my patrons. It's great to have you on board. Thank you for the support of the channel. Thank you for the likes. Please, if you can, share that video with your friends so they can join the challenge as well and they can enjoy this video. And uh, please, um, if you can, uh, spread the word so there will be more of us having this wonderful uh, fun during September. And um, of course, my job now is to finish the horse to make the other side, which is not going to take that much. And um, I would love to post the photos tomorrow for you, but big, big announcement. I forgot, I almost forgot because I got so excited. Tomorrow here, the same time I'm back uh, with the stream, and I'm going to show you new packaging of the waxes. I'm going to answer all the questions about the new packaging of the waxes in tubes. I'm going to show you the colors which are already repacked into the tubes. And I'm going to uh, show you a quick application of the waxes. If you are new to mixed media, 
uh, that is uh, something that um, probably you will be interested in. If you've never tried waxes, uh, you should definitely check that stream tomorrow. This is going to be um, something that um, is uh, just good to know what are the differences. It's not going to be as long, of course. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet and full of information. So my horse is uh, half ready and you could see a lot of cool techniques today, I hope. It, and not tomorrow, the same time. So 6 p.m. of my time, 7 p.m. of European time. And then I'm going to post that later today anyway in the group and on Facebook. So there will be a link to convert your time. And um, if you have any questions, I'm here and you can ask. The horse is... Block it again. The horse is really, truly magical. It's hard to see in that light because, of course, the top uh, lamp is um, changing the perception a little bit. But in the daylight, you're going to see all the beautiful tones of iridescent mica. Please join the challenge. Support, uh, support me on Patreon. Visit the website. Visit the Instagram. Uh, Spread the word, you know, everything is done for you. So I hope that uh, you are going to have a great time. Yes, well, you already make plans for making the project. I, I can't wait to see. I can see there was something about the dog and about the rat. I heard before about the horses and the dragons. Hmm. I think this challenge was a great idea. I will have such great time just looking at your projects and I will get inspired to do more. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Spread the news, share the info, join the challenge, win the prizes. You know. Bye.